We welcome you to college football on CBS. Today, Army, Navy, America's game. Presented by USAA. And for the fifth time in the 115 year history of this rivalry, the game is being played in Baltimore, Maryland. Two and two, the two teams are in the previous competitions here. And speaking of the pageantry, the Leapfrogs and the Golden Knights, parachute teams from the respective academy. How about this? Well, he was two yards from the 50. Now let's go to our public address announcer, Bruce Cunningham. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation by Captain Michael Gore, United States Navy Chaplain Corps and Command Chaplain at the United States Naval Academy. And please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by the combined West Point Glee Club and the United States Naval Academy Glee Club under the direction of Dr. Aaron Smith. I invite all who wish to pray to join me. Almighty God, we gather once more on the field of friendly strife with comrades in arms who are separated by the colors of their uniforms, but united in a condiment bond of service to their country. As much as they love this game, they love their country better and have sworn their lives to its defense. We are grateful for young men such as these and for the cadets and midshipmen they represent. They are truly the finest our country has to offer. Grant that they may do their best this day in friendly competition, remembering that someday soon, on some far-flung field of battle, they will undoubtedly stand shoulder to shoulder, facing a common foe on behalf of all who watch them from the stands this day. God bless them, God bless us, and God bless the United States of America. Amen. Combined Glee Clubs of West Point and Annapolis, the U.S. Military Academy and the Naval Academy, and not far from Raven Stadium, Fort McHenry. And it was in this location that Francis Scott Keyes composed the words to our national anthem. Army Navy, again. Back with more right after this. College football on CBS. The Army Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by DirecTV. America's Navy. Red Lobster. And USAA, who along with the fans here in Baltimore, salute America's game.
Only they know what it feels like, years later, or when they're just starting out. Only they know what it feels like to be a different kind of kid who makes the choice to go to West Point or Annapolis. Good. A different kind of person who sacrifices some of the best years of their life. I'm 22 years old. Oh, I'm 22. I'm 21 years old. Today is my birthday. Dedicating themselves, risking their lives, all for their country. All my friends back home partying, sleeping in. Their college experience is just a little bit different from mine. Yeah, I don't really know what a summer break is. Uh, we didn't have one last year. Free time here at the academy. <laughs> it's just all the challenges that you have to face. The military, the school, you know, academics. And then on top of that, throwing in playing Division I football. It's the best feeling to know that, you know, you get to live your dream every day. Captain Mike Vitti knows what it feels like to be one of them, to make a different choice, to learn true sacrifice, to embark on a commitment that has defined his life ever since. A decade ago, he was a fullback for the Army Black Knights, captain of the team as a senior. As a platoon leader in Afghanistan, he served heroically, earning the Bronze Star. But then he came home and determined his mission wasn't complete. So, for the past seven months, two weeks, and three days, Mike Vitti has been walking across America, from sea to sea, headed to a football game. I'm doing this because somebody has to. One kilometer for every service member killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's doing a sensational thing with his walk across the country, and that's a perfect example of the kind of guys that we have come out of here. Walking around the country kind of embodies that brotherhood. I truly believe like, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing at this exact moment. It's about pride. It's about respect. It's about honor. The sacrifice is for the men and women who gave us absolutely everything. And with him always on this journey, sacred cargo. I write one name for every single service member killed in action and walk those flags across the country to the Army-Navy game. For me, it's just a way to pay tribute to my heroes. Among those names, a fallen teammate and a fallen rival, their memories among those pushing every step forward. Lieutenant Chase Presnicki and Lieutenant J.P. Blacksmith both played in that game and gave their lives for our country. That's what sacrifice looks like. Today, on a field in Baltimore, Maryland, as two teams of football players, different from all the others, once again square off. Retired Captain Mike Beatty's journey ends where theirs begins, the Army-Navy game. This is the game. This is our Super Bowl. It's everything, actually. What you dreamt about since you were a kid. This is one of the biggest moments of our life. This game with me means everything. I spent my 21st birthday beating Army. Go Army! Be Navy! Beat Army! Let's go do this damn thing. Man. Go Army! Be Navy! For all that came before, go Army. A soldier's journey ends at this game, different from any other. And two hours ago, Captain Mike Vitti completed his cross-country walk as he arrived at Raven Stadium in downtown Baltimore for Army versus Navy. It's America's Game presented by USAA. And on the field, the Black Knights of Army an Apache flyover. And not too far behind them, the midshipmen of the Naval Academy. Here come the F-18s. Wow. I can promise you it never 
ever gets old. For Gary and me, when we get to be a part of this Army-Navy game, it is a special experience. Let's talk about 12 in a row, Gary. Uh, that's the number of times Navy has defeated Army in succession. Yeah, it's all over this football game. I mean, you look at the Army players, the Navy guys before the game, they know the streak. They're trying to defend it. Army bent wants so badly to do it. Even in the march on, the Navy were chiding the Army guys when they were marching on. I mean, it's it's part of the game. They're high quality kids. They have to deal with it, and I think they will. Navy won its last two games. They are bowl eligible again. They'll go out to San Diego for the Poinsettia Bowl, but I don't know that this is the best Navy team we've seen. Well, they played a tough schedule. Okay. I, I think they're, you know, I have a team that could beat anybody, but they've lost a few games. You're right, but the center of the football team is their quarterback. I mean, Keenan Reynolds, when he's hot, he's a threat to upset any football team that he plays, and that's going to be the center for the Army defense. They must slow him down. I mean, he's been the MVP in this game back-to-back -back years. And if Army has any chance in this game, they're going to have to stop number 19. 12 in a row. Army's heard it until they're sick of it. <laughs> They've got a brand new coach, Jeff Munkin, who seems to be a really good fit. You know, he's embraced it, Vern. I mean, he's really motivated his football team that there's no running away like we talked about it. It's discipline. It's attitude. From the day he took this job, there's no detail too small. I think it's what Army has needed in this game. But, you know, when you look at this Army football team, it's not going to be just one guy that really makes the difference. I think all of the Navy football players, from the right guard to the linebackers to Dixon, the fullback, they're all going to have to play just a little bit better to really take on Navy in this football game. But, of course, I think it's going to be the quarterbacks, too. When you're running the triple option, the Army's going to use two of them. Santiago's going to be one of them that'll play in the football game, and A.J. Sure, who started a year ago, will also play. It'll be two against one, but that that one, a pretty good football player for Navy. And now we take you to first on the field, presented by Microsoft Surface. The coin toss, and the coin will be tossed by the Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel. Tails, tails is the call, and it is Tails. You win the toss, you want to defer. Navy wins the opening coin toss, we'll defer their options until the second half. And moments ago, Allie LaForce with military dignitaries on the field. Thank you, Vern. I'm joined by four of the highest ranking military officials to talk a little bit more about this Army Navy rivalry. We'll start on my right with the Secretary of Defense, Mr. Chuck Hagel. Mr. Secretary, why is this game so important to the men and the women of the armed forces all over the world? Well, it represents the best of America. These, these young men and women who give so much their families, it just embodies who we are, the spirit of America, and I'm just so proud to be part of it. I think every American is. Absolutely. To my right is the Secretary of the Army, John McHugh. It's been 12 long years since Army's won this rivalry. What has been your message to the team all week? This isn't about yesterday, last year. This is about today. These cadets know that. They're going to go out and leave everything they got on the field. But as the Secretary said at the end, this is America's team. Thank you. Over to my left is the Secretary of the Navy. You, on the other hand, have had the bragging rights for 12 years. Uh, Secretary Mavis, what do you think has been the key to Navy's longtime success against Army, and can they do it again today? You know, these are great kids, and they're every one of them is going to turn pro. They're just turning pro in defense of our country. They've always been great games. We've had uh, a, an amazing run of success. We're going to do it again today. But uh, after today, one team, one fight. You got it. And lastly, how are you, sir? Good. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey. And you can you can squeeze in here so we can all hear this he answer. Can stand next to him. <laughs> Listen, we know that you oversee all four branches of the military, but it's no secret that you're a West Point graduate. How will you split your allegiances today? Oh, there's no split allegiance today. Today it's all about go Army, beat Navy. But how about the sound of freedom just a moment ago? Amazing. That's what it's all about. Men, thank you so much for your time Thanks and so good luck. Allie, thank you. And Navy won the toss, as you heard. They have deferred. So Army will get the ball. And we are about to go. Austin Grebe will kick it deep. Josh Jenkins, the primary returner. Xavier Moss is deep as well. Short kick taken at the 12 by Josh Jenkins. 
tries to bounce it outside and doesn't get very far. Well, we expect Angel Santiago to be the first out, the quarterback. And it will be number three. The Chick-fil-A starting lineup. Got to wait for the cow. Yeah, you're right. Vern, um, last year, the first two times Army had the ball, they fumbled. One they got back but lost over 15 yards. The next time they fumbled, the Navy got it. Ball. Control the ball is job one for Army. Larry Dixon will get the first handoff. He comes right over 1,000 yards this year for the senior. Let's check the Army offense. Alexander Shoemaker, Hugenberg, Holland, McDonald. Kelvin White is the tight end. Dixon, the 1,000-yarder, and I can't resist this. Edgar Poe is a wide receiver. We are in Baltimore, after all, in Ravens Stadium. Now, I got that out of the That's way. That's good. Well, let's see if he can do more than just get announced. They might need a big play from him. Second down and six. Dixon up the middle again, second carry. And the Navy defense will line up thusly. Questionberry, senior, very effective, and they hope for big things out of the nose tackle, Sarah, today. And down at the bottom, the captain, Parrish Gaines, a senior, quiet, effective leader for all his years. And Ken Niamatololo, the head coach of the Naval Academy. Whoa, look at that. Ah. Little wrinkle. Third and three. Looks like he got it. Trenton Turin time. Number 10. Looked like the four horsemen there I shifting did, around, yeah. didn't it? A little shift. Center. Boy, the center shifted away from the ball. That had to at least keep the Navy off balance a little bit. You know, Vern, Jeff Munkin was quoted as... We, listen, Navy's a little better than us right now. That's what he told me. Right. But we have a better chance of beating them now than we did at the beginning of the season. We're a better team. We've improved all year. Four wins for the men from Army. Here's the option, and San Diego, not much. Jordan Drake, number 13, linebacker, made the tackle. That Navy defense is very solid against, especially this wishbone, wishbone attack. They've got a lot of players that have played a lot of snaps, but I think the middle of it is the guy, the key guy. I mean, when you have a nose tackle like Sarah, he just almost takes on two blocks almost every play and sometimes three. Now, he really has been effective in the middle of that defensive line. Second down and 10. And it's going to be... Dixon again. Larry Dixon out of Bremerton, Washington. The teams are tied 2-2. This is the fifth game in Baltimore. Navy won the first game in 1890. And as you have heard, if you followed the buildup to this game, they've won the last 12 in a row. Two years ago, Army came very close, a fumble on the last drive at the 14-yard line. This would be a perfect game plan for Army. If they could make it in chunks of 3-3-2, three, three, there's the same shift in short yardage. Ah, something think... rare. A pass. Nope. Something not rare. Incomplete. Well, you know, it worked the first time against this Navy defense of Buddy Green, but the second time the veterans reacted very good to it, shifted, and forced the throw to the sideline, and it was caught out of bounds or missed out of bounds, however what happened. Joe Walker was the intended receiver. And so fourth down and no four. Way they no, I could, I, uh, no way. No uh way. -uh. <laughs> Alex Tardu is on to punt. And to Brandon Sanders, who is a speedster at the 20-yard line. Navy keeps their defense out there for safe, but this ball's going to be punted. It was like Army moved. Or was it delay a game? Ooh. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. 
This is an ACC crew, and the referee is Riley Johnson. So fourth and nine. Sanders for the year has returned only six. Neither team particularly effective in that phase of the game. Cardu. Nice. And Fair catch called for and taken at the 21, perhaps the 22. 43 yard punt, nothing on the return. Raven Stadium, Baltimore. Time called. Well, the joint be jumping. They, the cadets, uh, the minute we went to commercial, started hopping up and down, and some of the subs did the same thing on the bench. That leads us to the chicken. Chick-fil-A, that is. Thank you very much. Starting quarterback, Keenan Reynolds. Well, he's missed a couple games this year with injury. He had you know, knee problems, shoulder problems. But when he's in there, he's just a handful. I, I really believe, Vern, he could run any offense and be that good of a quarterback. He's Russell Wilson-ish. Out of Antioch, Tennessee, third year as a midshipman. Seems so long ago, but we first saw him against Notre Dame in Dublin. Here's the option, and Reynolds. Nice tackle. And the tackle from Jeffrey Bacon, who's getting a start today. He's a captain. Yeah, it was Bacon and Jenkins. I think both of them, the corner on the play. Bacon cleaned it up, but Josh Jenkins, who's usually a cover corner, was really the one that took the legs out from under the quarterback. Noah Copeland is directly behind Keenan Reynolds. Second down, six. Nice defense on Copeland. Joe Drummond with the tackle, number 54. You know, Vern, if you ever get to meet Joe Drummond, it should be nice to him. The guy may be president of the United States one day. I mean, if you got to talk about someone that's got it all together, it might be Drew Drummond. And let me add one more thing. He's a scratch golfer. I know that. <laughs> How about that? He, he played football, basketball, and golf well, in high school. Well, he got a scratch tackle on that one, I'll tell you that. Joe Drummond, one of the seniors. Look at this. Reynolds to throw. No, he will not. And he will not get anything. Richard Glover, number 98. The defensive tackle. It's three and out for Navy. Well, this is a veteran sec secondary for Army. A lot of games started having Bacon back helped, and there was no one to throw that football to. What a great defensive start for Army. And, you know, couple that with no turnover to begin the game. I think Army likes the way the game started compared to a year ago. Here's the punt. They're going to get the block. Loose ball picked up. Touchdown, Army. Xavier Moss. Josh Jenkins with the block. Okay. Vern, since 2001, that is the first points by Army other than their offense. They have had no points on special teams or defense since 2001. A little help, and this time from special teams. And that's the last year they've won, 2001. That's true. Block punt, the extra point forthcoming. A seven-yard return. Daniel Grachowski will attempt the extra point. Maybe. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty will be added to the try. Let's look at the block again. You could tell this was scouting right here. Jenkins is going to come right off the edge when the Navy shifts in. He had the lane. One shift in, 
and Jenkins, the fastest player for Army, made that short corner. You know that Army felt good about that all along. They knew Navy would shift, and they had the path. Low snap, nice hold by A.J. Schur. Special teams. Gary, another look at the block. Jenkins had a block against Fordham at the end of the half for a big play for their win, but this time he was in there so fast, he almost overran it. Nevertheless, Army leads by seven. I am uh, Army defensive end Joe Drummond. One day I hope to be the best officer in the Army that I can be. Go Army, beat Navy. Uh, Joe Drummond said his dad took him to his first Army game. They played Duke at Mikey Stadium his junior year. He fell in love with the location, the facilities, and most of all, the aura of West Point. Just thought it was funny that he played golf in high school and his brother was a, now playing at Hillsdale College, right. a football player. I mean, uh, tremendous family, and uh, he's a good football player, too. So the block punt leads to the touchdown. Caleb Brewer will kick off. Short at the 10. Ryan Williams at the 30. At the 38-yard line, nice return of a short kickoff. Took it we, on the run. Yeah, we saw Ryan in the first game of the year when he had over 100 yards rushing against Ohio State. It's a really the only running back other than Keenan Reynolds in the fullback any of the slapbacks that had more than 100 yards all year. He's a, had his big game early. As he get up the middle, that's Noah Copeland again. Well, you've met Keenan Reynolds. Let's uh, introduce you to the remainder of the Navy offense. Heath, Ben, Fleming, Jake Zuzek. Longtime starter, senior on that offensive line. And you see Noah Copeland now with a couple of carries at the fullback spot. Second and seven. Test the middle, get about two and a half. Army's defense. Drummond, you met Eugene Riccardi. Down at the bottom, Jeffrey Bacon, captain of this team, injured an, uh, a leg in the game against Yale. He's missed the last eight and was not listed on the depth chart. But we were told uh, yesterday that he might be able to play, and here he is starting. It'll be fourth down. Richard Glover, second tackle in his many series. Yeah, fourth and uh, short here. Let's see what Ken Niamatololo does. Will he punt the ball? It appears he will. Pablo Beltran is on. He's a four-year punter for the Navy. Let's find Chris Jenkins, see if they go for it again. Turn and gets it out to the 16 yard line. Well, how Army's defense, two straight three and outs. The first one was a block punt. Talked about some help for this Army football team. They did it. They got some points from someone other than their offense. Time called in Baltimore, 7 0 Army. Right, take a look at the lineup regional coverage tomorrow the NFL on CBS lead game early Miami at New England Jacksonville Baltimore Alley the force is going to stay over here and do a double dip Denver and San Diego late an important game in the AFC West and it all begins with JB in the quartet the NFL today tomorrow presented by Southwest Airlines.
Inside the 20 now. Army with the football. 7.43 to go. San Santiago takes care of the ball. He does not turn it over, and I think that's key for Army on offense. Just take care of that ball, find some offense, and then maybe put Sure in a little later for some more quarterback runs. That was Terry Beggett, who a year ago exceeded 1,000 yards, injured much of this year with an ankle. Number 31, Terry Baggett from Chicago. Remember a year ago, he had 304 yards yeah. in a single game? Yeah, against Eastern Michigan. Yeah. Second down, six. He's another one of those guys. When we talk about Sarah, Quessenberry, Will Anthony this time, I don't know if it was supposed to be a play where, you know, well actually uh, it was supposed to be Maples that was supposed to come in and block him and didn't have a chance. And Will Anthony said, all right, you put a running back on me, I'll get the quarterback. And he did. Third and seven. Edgar Poe wide to the left. Siobhan Lawrence, bottom of the screen. Battered backwards. It'll be fourth down. Chris Johnson, oft injured linebacker for this Navy team. Coming off the edge, he's the outside linebacker. No one really blocks him on the play. And very athletic. I mean, when even when we saw him against two years ago against note uh, in the Ohio State game, excuse me, at the beginning of this season, you could tell that he is a guy that could play at any level on any team. Chris Johnson. DeBrandon Sanders for Navy is back to return the punt. On fourth down seven, here's Tardu. They're going to let this one bounce, and it'll take a substantial Army roll. To the 30. Fifty one yard punt for Tardu. Seven nothing. Midway, first quarter. Army, maybe for the 115th time. Seven nothing Army, first quarter, six to go. Army trying to break a 12-game losing streak. They last won this game in 2001. What's happened since then? Well, among other things, you've got Brady winning his first Super Bowl. LeBron, number one draft pick. Affected my life with Facebook and Twitter were recreated. The college football playoff has been created, and Barack Obama became the 44th United. It has been a long time for Army. They're tossing beach balls in the uh, cadet section. Hey, you get away from West Point for a Saturday and... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Feels like a trip, right? Yeah. Interesting spot where Navy has the ball, 70 yards away, Vern. Of the 51 touchdowns, 29 have come between 70 and 79 yards. Navy's comfortable. Keenan Reynolds. Tackled by Jeremy Timp, the linebacker. Boy, this Navy, excuse me, this Army defense seems just wired in for this triple option. See that bottom line on the right side, 24 turnovers. Yep, it's a story. Yeah. Second down, 10. Can't beat yourself before you can beat the other team. Have a chance to beat Navy. Tanner Fleming, the center over the ball, Keenan Reynolds. Up under center on second and ten. Reynolds wants to throw. Can't. Sacked. Andrew King, number 11, the middle linebacker. And again, that veteran defense, the veteran secondary just covers them. There's no one open. Sending out three receivers. Watch that secondary react. Safety is bacon. That's how you play defense. 
and that allows that off the defensive line to get inside. Andrew King from the linebacker position forces the tackle. Army's defense seems a half step ahead, don't they? Third down 10. Reynolds drills it right side. Good coverage. Wow, one on one. You know how we said in the open burn that you have to do, everybody has to do just a little bit more. Right. Stephen McCarty right there, number 32. Watch him get off the block. Just get off the block. Just a little bit more from everybody along the way. That's how you can beat Navy. That's how you can change 12 straight into a win. Three straight, three and outs. And Beltran gets this one away, Edgar Poe. Defender slipped. Poe is taken down. Brendan Clements. And let's go down to Allie LaForce. Thank you, Vern. The Army sideline is absolutely going nuts. They're jumping on top of each other. They're motioning to the stands for everybody to stand up and cheer. The coaches had a hard time even getting them to sit down on the bench because they were so excited. You can tell it's a powerful moment and a lot of momentum going their way right now. All right. Thank you, Allie. They lead 7-0. Just under four to go, opening quarter. Seem so prepared, don't they? They, they do. seem to be able to feel the play before it's happening, and then just like there, they're defeating the blocks. First down, 10. The pitch, the lead blocker, good one. But then a trailing defender. That was Joe Walker with the pitch. Counter option that time. Get it out around the corner. Block, excuse me, a pitch man and a good block to the outside by Larry Dixon, the fullback. When you run the counter option, it's the fullback who is leading the pitch man. Second down, six. Jeff Munkin in his first year at West Point. Ken Niamatololo has been in Navy for a while, and they're both acolytes of <laughs> Paul Johnson. This friendship goes back to years at Hawaii. This is the 1990 Hawaii football coaching staff. There's Paul Johnson, so successful at Navy and Georgia Tech. Ken Niamatololo, and you saw Jeff Munkin, and here's the 27 Navy football team with Munkin and Niamatololo as assistants for Paul Johnson. So they both learned a lot, and they have remained great friends, Niamatololo and Jeff Munkin. Two good football coaches. Yes, indeed. They're going to shift it again or stay in it unbalanced. This time they stay unbalanced. Yeah. First down, Larry Dixon. Well, that little uh, sideways shift by the offensive line, this time you wonder if the Navy defense was expecting a shift. They didn't get it. They run the unbalanced to the right. Seems like, you know, now we've been talking about Army being very conservative. But it seems like they run to the right every time. Yes. Nothing to the left. Get it? Right? <laughs> Conservative. <laughs> I have. <laughs> They've been running right. I, what I, can I say? I once asked President <laughs> Obama if he felt comfortable going to the right. There it goes to the right again? Yeah. Uh, somehow politics just had to be of this. I, <laughs> seven nothing. I, I got it. It took me a while, though. I, uh, uh, you know. I, know. I was being obtuse. Second and seven. Well, this Navy football team has a lot of experience. They've been in a lot of big games. When you play Ohio State, and Notre Dame, and their schedule, they're, you know, they've been scored on before. Watch them kind of settle down and try to force this Army offense into doing something a little bit out of their comfort zone. Santiago. First down, Army. Well, right now, offensive coordinator Brent Davis, who was with Jeff Munkin at Georgia Southern, is call, pulling all the correct levers. Just seems on defense, they're a half a step ahead. On offense right now, they're a half a step ahead with their triple option. That's a gain of 13. We near the final minute of the opening quarter. Look, Garrett, 
They went left. Finally! <laughs> this was just an option play, just a sprint option to the left. No faking. Well defended by Navy, forces Santiago to keep the football for basically a small gain. Again, Army would like to do it this way. Keep the ball away from Keenan Reynolds. Make those plays three, four, five, six yards at a time. They don't need big plays. They need to control the clock and keep the Navy offense off the field. Second down seven again. Up the middle. Raymond Maples, he's another of a thousand yard rushers for this uh, Army team. He accomplished that two years ago. We've reached the end of the first quarter. Block punt, run in for a touchdown, and that gives Army a 7 nothing lead. We'll return to Baltimore after this message and a word from your local station. We welcome all of you back to America's Game. Army Navy from Baltimore. We begin the second quarter. Gary Danielson, Ali LaForce, I'm Vern Lundquist. It's seven nothing. And Army, despite the uh, cheering of the young Navy fans, has controlled the football game so far. Third down four. Chased. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now that's a sack. Jordan Drake. Uh, I have to say I'm shocked with that call. Totally shocked with that call. Army got a bit greedy. Vern just told you they controlled the whole first quarter. Almost pitched a perfect game to this point. I thought they were in four down territory. I thought they were just going to run it and run it again if they didn't make it. Got a little greedy and their first negative play of the game. Huge loss. And Alex Tardu is on to punt. Brandon DeSanders will let it bounce. This time. Yeah, not a good one this time, no. right? Twenty-eight yard punt after that huge sack. And maybe gets the ball back. Jordan Drake got to Angel Santiago. Timeout. Seven nothing opening moments second quarter. How about the uh, Army defense? Well, Navy has run nine plays, Vern. Three, three and outs. And it has been a team defense. When they've tried to run the option, nothing. Drop back to pass, nothing. Everything Keenan Reynolds has done so far has been snuffed out, and the Army defense has been a step ahead. That's really a perfect first quarter. Reynolds so far, six yards rushing, three passing. First down, 10, about three yards. On first down. Your impression, Mr. Daniels? Well, I'm, I, 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 listen, like this. I, I'm delighted we got a football game. Yes. You know, I, at, at sometimes you look at these games, you go, boy, Navy's got a lot of good football players if Keenan gets going, but don't underestimate Navy. They've been a lot of big games. They've seen it all, and they have weapons. This is going to bring up a third down as Chris Swain gets the carry on that one, number 37. Both of these teams, as you would expect, you will use a lot of running backs. Third down, two. Maybe looking for its first first down of the game. They trail by seven. Sidelines. 
Well, Gary mentioned Keenan Reynolds did miss two games, and they uh, they played him once when he was injured. Again, Nia Matololo said that was a big mistake. Yeah, a little bit against Rutgers, he got hurt. He sat out, uh, as, as Vern Jones told you, those two games. But, you know, he has really only been stopped this year in three games. Ohio State held them to 42, Rutgers 25, and Air Force to 27. That's the only games he's really been stopped. Stopped at the 40. Well, he is uh, only a junior out of Antioch, Tennessee, but rushing yards first, second in career yards, 61 touchdowns, and four 200-yard games. I love what you said. He could run any offense I think he in could. the country. I think yep. he could. I mean, he's, he's a Blake Sims-type athlete. There you go. You know? Play action now. Oh, no, he's got the wheel route. And he's got a guy wide open and he drops it. Another break for Army. The wheel route placed perfectly and dropped. You could see it right from the start. Going to go right down this sideline, cleared inside by the receiver. I think Williams Jenkins, was it the fullback or Williams Jenkins? It was Noah Copeland Noah dropped Copeland, the ball. Yeah. Well, that makes a little more sense. <laughs> Fullback <laughs> dropping the ball rather than one of those slot backs. So third down nine. That's a wonderfully, a wonderful missed opportunity is Noah Copeland. Yeah, that was a break. Army needs yeah. a couple breaks. They got one there. Woo! How about that? A Swain. <laughs> yes. If you just look at the carries, when you look at the rush attempts for Navy, Keenan Reynolds has 205 rush attempts for the season, almost twice as much as the next player, which is fullback Copeland, and Swain has 87. They go quarterback, fullback. That's the center of this offense. Right. And this is Swain. The backup fullback, second down and nine. Maybe doing their version of an up tempo, calling the plays at the line of scrimmage, but Army's just giving a big yawn to this. <laughs> even, they don't even try to substitute. Reynolds under some pressure. Shakes the first tackle, shakes the second, and uh, lunges forward for a couple of extra yards. Jeremy Timp, number 39, was the guy who got there. Well, I'll show you how important Jeff Bacon is. Watch him read the option and find the slot back right away. He reads it and handles the slot back. That's where the play was trying to go that time. That's experience and why Jeff Bacon was so important for this football game for Army. Out eight games with an injury. Third down. Reynolds, I think, is going to be about a foot short. Yeah, and, and Nate, Kenny Niamatololo will go for this one. Yes. The way this game has been unfurling so far. <laughs> Following the fullback, one of their staples on the play. Fourth and a foot or so. Well, if it was most times they run the quarterback in this situation. Man, they do. I remember all the way back when we first started doing this, Vern, Ricky Dobbs would always follow that fullback or slot back on these short yardage plays. This time it's just wedged so close that you knew Reynolds was going to keep that football. First down 10. After going the entire first quarter without a first down. And now this drive sustained again. Yeah, Navy leads the country in rushing. 358 yards a game, and it's not by accident. Sooner or later, they're going to find those little creases. That tackle made by Joe Drummond. Get the fastest scores and updates for Army, Navy, and all teams with the CBS Sports app. The fastest app for sports fans. Download the CBS Sports app now. I wonder if Joe Drummond had an equipment problem right there because he asked off the field. I wonder if he broke a face mask or something. Looks like it. He's going to the helmet. Second down and 10. The pitch just as contact was made. 
And a huge defensive play by Andrew King, number 11. I'll tell you, what a defensive call this time. Steph Stephen Riccardi, number 32, makes the play. Keenan Reddles, lucky he got it off. Look at 32 right in the face of Keenan Reynolds. And so on third down, this is the 13th play in this drive. Think back to a third down that Army had when they dropped back to pass. Yeah, that was just a perfect call on defense that time by Jay Bateman. Army's defensive coordinator just dialed up a perfect attack defense there. Third and 16. Riddles chased. Let's it go deep. Incomplete. Pressure from behind from James Kelly, number 43. And so it'll be fourth down, and again, Niamatololo will punt. It's I really interesting, Vern, when you look at it, you know, it's two wishbone teams. But the Army secondary is making a statement. Navy feels like they have to loosen them up with some pass plays. Everything they tried, Navy secondaries had an answer except for the one drop pass where they got a break. Fourth down 16. Beltran earlier blocked for the first time in his career, and that led to the only score we've had in the ball game. This one will. So that close. went back. That's a touchback, yeah. isn't it? I yeah. think it is a touchback. It is, but ever so close. Noah Copeland was the man down there. Beltran thought he had punched it perfectly. Yeah, he did that end over end kick and thought it was going to stop. Belt, it's faked, and then watch this. Copeland's got it. Ah. Navy Ooh. must knock it in because that ball had stopped. Navy must have knocked the ball in at the end. Because this ball was stopped dead, and they just been a little more patient with it. There, it stopped. Oh, yeah. and then bounced in at the last second. Ryan Harris looking for that number all over. Ryan Harris knocks it in the end zone. I didn't see you there. I don't know if you were counting. I did a thousand. You want to be strong? You want to look like me? You want to look like that guy? Uh, you all right, little buddy? Yeah, I'm in the Navy. Pathetic. Look how this guy does PT. This is how I do PT. No burn. A little bit of burn. There's the burn. Puny Navy sidearm? Pathetic. Army sidearm? <laughs> nice ride, Navy guy. Thanks, I got on alone. Pathetic. This is what I drive. Obviously, here in the Army, we do things a little bit differently. Hey, Navy guy, what happened to you? He got beat pretty badly. Pathetic. On game day, don't be like this guy. Go Army. Coming Monday on CBS, these geniuses don't fit in the world, but they're the only ones who can save it. A new episode of Scorpion Monday at 9, 8 central only, CBS. Big break for Army when Noah Copeland seemed to have stopped that punt at the one foot line and a teammate, Ryan Harris, came in and tipped it into the end zone. And so the young men from West Point open at their own 20 yard line. Santiago keeps it, goes to the right. You know, this uh, Navy, excuse me, this Army team just seems more disciplined. And Jeff Bunkin, right from day one, that was his, I think, what he said, looked at the team, the team needed more. I was reading about Army's first scrimmage this fall. They ran 55 plays, and in film study, Jeff said he noticed 90 total effort plays that they just didn't have enough effort. They had to do 90 grass drills the next day after that scrimmage. And I'll tell you what Larry Dixon was doing during those 90s after this play. Second down, seven. There's the hand up to turn time. He doesn't get much. How about that? Total team. Remember, there's 22 guys in a scrimmage on the field, 55 plays. They had to do 90 grass drills. And the captain right there during the grass drills was going, don't you love it? 
Don't you love it? Smile if you love it. That's the type of guys he's coaching there for West Point and his Army football team. Larry Dixon, the senior, I mentioned earlier <laughs> out of Bremerton, Washington. And ironically, his mom, Laura Ashley, served in the Navy for yes. 24 years as a chief petty officer. And we'll never forget Larry Dixon, you know, in that, that game a couple a few years ago. Two years ago, yep. you bet. Draw play, Dixon. Breaks the tackle, wonderful run, right on cue. Thank you. Don't you love it? Don't you love it? This guy loves playing football. People around him said he's never had a bad day. Never had a bad day. Sprint draw, runs right through a tackle, and then puts his hand down, keeps his balance, and makes the first down. His mom, Laura Ashley, has made the trip from Bremerton, just across the sound from Seattle. His two sisters are here as well. First down and 10. Lee Flicker. Santiago, nobody open downfield. Heads right. Well, this time the Navy secondary saves a big play. Army pulling out all the stops, giving the flea flicker play, but the Navy defense is there, and then Santiago does exactly what he should. You see the secondary, that's who the ball was supposed to go to. It was handled very cleanly by this Navy defense, especially Gaines. Paris Gaines, their senior guy, didn't wasn't fooled just like Bacon before. Second down and two. From the middle. Now let's go to the studio for this Heisman Watch presented by Nissan. Here's Adam Zucker. Hey, Vern, it is the ultimate Heisman Watch. The three finalists are right here in the studio. Marcus Mariota, Amari Cooper, and Melvin Gordon will be talking to them at halftime. You don't want to miss it. Now back to the Army-Navy game. Adam, thank you, and we look forward to that. Peace. There's like a play action pass just standing there. Your Mariota buddy. fakes it. The Gordon throws it deep to Cooper. Couldn't and have any better than that, could you? Cooper Woo! makes his 184th <laughs> catch of the season. And Lane Kiffin puts his hands up before it's even caught. Perfect. We've seen that twice. First down and 10. Santiago, there's the pitch. Lead blocker. This is Joe Walker. Inside the 40. Turn time with the key block. It was Trenton Turrentine, number 10, that gets the arc block. Watch number 10. You've seen the option a dozen times, a hundred times, but the key to it is truck and trailer. The truck and the trailer. Just follow that truck. Outside hip, no dip. The first day you put in the triple option, that's what you hear. Outside hip, no dip. You sound like a rap star. <laughs> no, that's that's the words of the triple option. You have to set up the block by staying on that outside hip. There's Santiago. Jordan Drake with the tackle. Well, we just uh, were introduced to the three finalists for the Heisman, and that sets up the Duck and the Affleck trivia question. When were the only two times that two Heisman Trophy winners played in a game against each other. It's happened twice. And if Mariota wins, he will face Jameis Winston in Florida State out in the Rose Bowl. You did say if. You didn't really need to, did you? Or did I you don't just, think so. You threw it in there. Yeah, I just, well, because I am the ultimate cautious. It's a broadcast. big show tonight, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We keep the suspense going <laughs> for as long as we can. Left side. Larry Dixon again. Just talking about the significance here of this drive. You know, what's going to be under three minutes before, you know, they get the even uh, the next snap, or at least after the next snap. Remember, Navy gets the ball to start the second half. Can they get a stop here? Can Army get another one? The key part of the football game right here. See plenty of time on the play clock. Third down two. This drive began at the 20 yard line. The only score in the game, a blocked punt that led to a touchdown. Don't expect a play action pass this I point. don't think so. Put that one in hiding. Oh, boy. Well, they'll go for it on fourth. I well, it's in, in huh? between territory. I think you're right. Was this Sarah this time that makes this play from the nose tackle position? 
couldn't Will quite Anthony. see. Will Is it Will Anthony, Anthony yep. number 90? Yeah, Anthony takes on the blocker that time and just steps out and makes the play. Todd McDonald had a block, but did not handle Anthony. Grachowski is the field goal kicker. His longest is 46. And Army will go for the first time. Watch three games, and almost 100% the quarterback keeps it in this situation. The quarterback is the senior Santiago. There's that little shift. Right side. Uh, let's see what. Oh, timeout. Call. Oh, Navy took a timeout. Wow. There is no play before the snap. Timeout, Navy. That is their first charge of this half. This is for me a timeout. This time the shift. Let's see if we can see Nehemiah Loto call timeout. He did. Ooh, that was really close. Yes, it was. I hate that rule. I really do. Timeout should be called on the field. Eat it. Seven nothing Army, and it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. You know, Vern, uh, Army needed something to go their way. And so far in this game, they made it happen. Blocking a punt. They haven't had any points other than their offense. And then a little good fortune. A drop ball by Copeland there. And a punt that could have been down inside the one gets batted into the end zone. Some good fortune now. Let's see if it continues on this fourth down call. Now they got fourth and about a foot. And uh, Santiago appeared to have gotten the first down. Yeah, and remember, this drive would have started on the half-yard line right. instead of the 20. It was a very important play, that batting it into the end zone there. Fourth and one. They've already made it once, because remember, yeah. the 22 guys on the field didn't know that there was a timeout. That's why I don't like that call. Fourth and one with 2.14 to go before the half. Matt Hugenberg, number 53, getting ready to snap the ball back. Quarterback sneak again. He didn't get it. Did he fumble it? He fumbled it. How about that timeout taken? I think this ball was fumbled. Well, it's going to be marked short regardless, so it would go over on down. Well, I thought his forward progress was good. Did you really? Yes. Okay. I think he fumbled this ball. <laughs> so he goes really for it. It's touched through. Down, short of the line of the game. The ball will go over on downs. Well, they're First saying down. what you say, but that ball was pumped, and OB... Zoma had the football and ran down the field. Look at Zoma take the football. Yep. Looked like it was forced by Quesenberry, number 45. Punched out in the first either turnover or whatever. That could have, either way, the whistle blew. So even if the replay official calls it an, a fumble, Navy is not going to get a touchdown out of this. Run, run, run. run. <laughs> How about the timeout? Could that be the changing event, the timeout by Neil Matalolo? Ball goes over. Maybe has it. Adam Zucker in New York. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, it is Heisman Central here in the studio. Spencer, Brian, and I will chat with the Heisman finalists, Marcus Mariota, Amari Cooper, and Melvin Gordon. We'll have some laughs. Now back to Army-Navy. Well, we'll chuckle here, too, just <laughs> make sure we're all in the same group. And the answer to the Aflac trivia question. When were the only two times that two Heisman Trophy winners played in a game against each other if Marcus wins? And I did say if. <laughs> It happened in the Orange Bowl, Jason White and Matt Leinert, and it happened Florida versus Oklahoma, Tim Tebow and Sam Bradford. First down 10 ruled the change took place on downs. Yes. After a timeout called, here's Reynolds back to throw deep down the middle. 
Jameer Tillman. Right, here's Tillman's gonna come. A little bit of a miscommunication right there in the backfield. Pierce gets turned around, faces one way and then comes back. Good catch. And then Tillman turns it upfield. How about, this is just shocking, the difference of what's happened since that timeout play. Let's take, take another look at that timeout call by Liam Matalolo on fourth and one. And did he get it off just in time? Or, oh boy, I don't even know if he did. That ball was being snapped just as he's calling timeout. Wow. Mm. There's I don't, you know, obviously we can't hear the whistle. Right. But there was, the only person that could have done it was that linesman right there. Ball start, number 62, five yard penalty, second down. You know, there's a lot of Army generals that could start an investigation right now into this. I'm telling you right now, if they if they can, somebody could be walking on the field right now and yeah, say, oh no, yeah. no, we just got a word. A committee's been put together. <laughs> Quick flip, caught. That's uh, Ryan Williams Jenkins. It is. That's who I thought dropped the first one, the slot back when it was Copeland. But this time, Ryan makes that catch and makes another positive play. And this is deja vu a little bit. Remember when Keenan Reynolds, two years ago as a freshman, led Navy down the field for that ultimately go ahead and winning touchdown. Third down one. Pitch. Missed tackle in the backfield. Joffrey Whiteside with a first down. Andrew King had a chance to stop this. Number 11, watch him in the backfield. Just got outran on the play. And, and that's exactly Army, who the coach is running over to. Time called, 25 seconds to go. Maybe driving. Geico halftime report coming up shortly. We'll go back to the studio. Adam and the guys and the Heisman finalists on the Geico halftime report. Well, you know, if coach, the Navy coach can do it, the Army coach can do it. Watch Jeff Munkin running on the field. Again, I don't think that's right. He first, I think he should be penalized, and then he goes right to King, the linebacker, to tell him that he should have been on that pitch guy. Interesting. Second interesting timeout that we've had. You've got the pitch man, he says to Andrew King, and that and Andrew King goes, I know, coach. Yep. He just outran me. First down, 10. Left side, a struggle, and the ball is inside the 10. It goes to Chris yeah, Swain. Yeah, timeout, two timeouts left for Navy, smartly used. Can't say enough how in control of this football game Army was, okay? They had made that first down. Timeout comes, and they don't, and all of a sudden, it could be way different. Thursday, rookie quarterback Blake Bortles and the Jaguars take on the Titans in an AFC South class. Thursday night football, Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern, live on the NFL Network. In this situation, Vern, as you look at the setup for the matchup right there, with only one timeout in 24 seconds, the best play call here is a pass. That way you could save on third down the option of doing both. Jameer Tillman is at the top of the screen in tight. Here's Reynolds rolling to his right, firing it into the end zone, caught by Jameer Tillman. And it also works a lot better if you complete it. Boot 
bootleg play, just think about it. If it's incomplete, then on third down, you can do either. A little bootleg coming across right in front of Hayden Pierce. Perfect throw and a well-executed drive by Navy. And I can't even get over how this game has changed. Austin Greedy to tie it up. Notched at seven. Just think about it. At the 30-yard line, Army appeared to have achieved a first down, but timeout was called, or was it in time? I don't think so. I'm telling you. And then the next play, whether he made it or not, it was going to be a fumble. I do think it was a fumble. And then right down the field, Keenan Reynolds, the worst nightmare for Army. They, he loves these two-minute situations. And on third, second down, excuse me, he produces a touchdown. And remember, Navy, who deferred, gets the ball to start the second half. Eighteen seconds to go, first half, tied seven. Seven. Well, Keenan Reynolds perfect on that last drive. And he found Jameer Tillman twice. Second time for the touchdown. Yeah, his first down throw right down the gut to start the drive. That was a what, what a 30, 35 yard throw to start 39. the 39 yep. yard yep. throw to start the drive. Just a wonderful leader who's been in, like we talked about, big games. He's been in them before. This is Josh Jenkins. December 27th, CBS Sports rings in the bowl season with a Pac-12 ACC matchup as the Sun Devils of Arizona State get some face time with the Duke Blue Devils in the Hyundai Sun Bowl. Be a devil of a game. Actually, I do. It's a good, good yeah, matchup. Yeah. I really think, you know, I look forward to seeing Coach Cutcliffe again. It's been a while since his days at Tennessee when we had him back in, was it 2006, 7, basically? Yep. First down, 10. This is Terry Baggett. Jeff Munkin takes a timeout. After a game of 13. Munkin grew up in Joliet, Illinois, and is a graduate of Millican, a Division III uh, program in Decatur, Illinois. Now, interesting, if Army does throw a Hail Mary here, what usually happens is Kelvin White, number two, their tight end, a former quarterback, is the guy who usually throws it. He can toss it 65 yards, so let's see if they dial him up to throw the deep ball. For the season, White has thrown a couple, neither complete. <laughs> Navy's secondary is back there like it's a kickoff return. It should, they sure are. Look at that. Yep, kickoff return left. And it is Kelvin White who's going to take the snap. And Army doesn't have a lot of fat guys on, so this should be okay. And he does. Tipped. Oh. Incomplete. Well, interesting last six or seven minutes, wasn't it? It sure was. This ball could have popped up and gone to the last guy. It just stayed flat. But that's what you want. One last chance. Xavier Moss was the last guy back there if it could have just been tipped a little higher. And let's go down to Allie, who is with Ken Niamatololo. Coach, that timeout seemed to be a turning point and a big one for your team in that first half. Did you tell the official ahead of time you were planning on calling it because it looks close? No, a lot of my coaches by Phil and just, you know, just felt like we needed a timeout um, and just called it. How important was the momentum that last offensive drive gave you going into half? It was huge because we got to settle down. Army's playing well on defense. We're a little rattled now, but we'll settle down and come back in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hey, 7-7. It looked pretty bleak there for Navy, but uh, 
Hey, he's won a lot of football games. He's won six in a row against Army. No Navy coach has ever started off 7-0. and End of the first half, our score is 7-7. Adam Zucker, Spencer Tillman, and Brian Jones will be along with the Geico Halftime Report after this word from your local station. CBS Sports presents the GEICO Halftime Report. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special GEICO Halftime Report. I'm Adam Zucker at halftime of the Army-Navy game. The Heisman Trophy will be awarded just a few hours from now, and we are joined by the three finalists in studio, Marcus Mariota of Oregon, Alabama's Amari Cooper is here as well, and Wisconsin running back Melvin Gordon, Guys are uh, tearing up New York City the way you guys tore up the uh, football field this year. And uh, hey, it's an offensive powerhouse we have, a future fantasy team. Uh, Marcus, let me start with you. What, what's it like for a guy who was a backup in high school to be mopping up some of the postseason awards that have already been granted? Uh, I mean, it's been truly surreal. Um, you know, I'm just taking this uh, one day at a time and just enjoying it. And, and you're, the, you're the favorite going into tonight's ceremony. Talk about how special it's been to lead the way for Oregon and, and what it would mean to you to bring a Heisman Trophy back to Eugene, where there's always been so much offense already. Oh, it's, it's been an awesome, awesome deal for me to be a part of this team. And, um, you know, I feel that this Heisman Trophy would, would mean a lot to the university and the community. Amari, I have been intrigued by what Lane Kiffin's presence has done to your offense. Obviously, a record setting year, over 1,600 yards for you. Talk about <coughs> Lane Kiffin's presence and what that's done to your maturation as a receiver. Uh, Lane Kiffin, he's came in. You know, he's a he's an offensive genius. Yeah. Uh, you know, he draws up plays and puts uh, his playmakers in situations where they can get in uh, space and make plays. Yeah, I, I'm upset because you guys have been tearing up New York City, as Adam just alluded to. <laughs> you didn't invite me now. Come on, I could have helped <laughs> you out a little bit. I, I know how to get past those doormen, but I'm sure you didn't have any issues there. Melvin, take me back to the Nebraska ball game. You decided just to play three quarters. I guess you were gassed a little bit after rushing for 408 yards. <laughs> At what point did you know you were running into history? Uh, I mean, I don't know. It was a lot of big runs, and uh, I think I got close. I was a couple yards away. I think on the last play where I, I actually broke the record, I didn't even know it. Really? Yeah, and then I went to the sideline, and, uh, and uh, a lot of the staff and a lot of people were telling me, I think you, I think you got a record. Now, do you regret not playing the fourth quarter? The fact that a week later, you know, Samaji P. Ryan yeah. there at that school, I hate Oklahoma, breaks oh, your record. Now, yeah. When you look back on it, do you regret not playing that fourth quarter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tell the truth, <laughs> man. <laughs> I wish I'd play a little longer now, but at the time, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the right thing to do. Um, but after he beat, you know, he beat my record, yeah, I definitely wish I would have played a little now, longer. Now, you hate OU too, right? <laughs> <laughs> and now you're, you're 292 yards away from the great Barry Sanders markup yeah. against uh, an Auburn team that was last seen uh, getting torched by Amari here. But, of course, Mr. Cooper's got to deal with the Buckeyes coming up. Uh, any advice for Amari in Alabama going up against the Buckeyes that just won that Big Ten championship? Yeah, just be him. I mean, I feel like, you know, what he do is just enough to win the game. Uh, they focus too much on him. You know, he has playmakers around him where, you know, they'll be able to, you know, eat up Ohio State. You know, I think if he just play his game and just, you know, not try to be Superman, just play Coop, just be Coop. Mm -hmm. He'd be all right. Marcus, let's talk about redeeming your, that, that one loss you had on the season. Arizona, the last two ball games prior to the Pac-12 championship, they'd owned you pretty good. Now, I know you limped into one last season, but this year, of course, they come up to Eugene and beat you. Tell us how that felt to redeem yourself, that one loss versus them. How fulfilling was that? Oh, it was great. Um, you know, it made it that much more sweet. And uh, for us, you know, the Arizona is such a great team that for us to kind of come out and play well, um, you know, was pretty fulfilling. Now, were you as shocked as a lot of us were with Don Pelham's defense? Man, they came out and really put it on uh, Rich Rod. He's our homeboy, but they put it on his offense, shut him down. No, we weren't surprised at all. We see it every day in practice. And, oh, they uh, shut you down. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> okay. They got a bunch of playmakers on that side of the ball. And, um, you know, for us as an offense, it was... It was fun to watch them be successful and, and uh, really take the limelight. Yeah, good. Yeah, you guys were all set, too, after winning your conference championship game on that Friday night and then let everybody else yeah, go to work yeah. on Saturday. That's pretty good. That's pretty nice. Uh, and, of course, Florida State is the team you're going to face now. What do you think of the Knowles and, and last year's Heisman Trophy winner, Jameis Winston? I mean, you know, their record says it all. Um, and we're going to have to be prepared. Their defense is really aggressive. Uh, they got a bunch of playmakers on that side of the ball. So uh, we just got to be prepared. 
I want to ask you guys a quick question about this whole playoff system, beginning with you, Amari. What, what is your take on it? I know Nick kind of kept you guys out of the four until you got to the point where it really mattered, and that's that final week. But do you like the system? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think it gives uh, teams a, a better chance mm -hmm. at the end of the season to redeem themselves if they have one loss. Because sometimes, you know, in the past, uh, teams haven't gotten an opportunity to uh, get to the national championship when they've lost one game or things like that. Yeah, but Marcus, you had the rare opportunity of doing something that most of these guys didn't, and that's playing a team that beat you previously in the season. I mean, that's rare. You had a chance to vindicate that, and that element of recency is in the, the minds of those who are making the decisions on the committee. Uh, what's your take on the system as it is right now? I, I, th I think it's great. You know, it's an opportunity for teams to, to have a chance at, at um, you know, like he said, redeeming yourself or, um, you know, not... You know, it's so tough to play in our conferences and, and to go out undefeated, um, it says, you know, it's really tough. And obviously for Florida State to do it, uh, it says a lot about their team. But, you know, most teams have to go through their conference and uh, if they get through their conference with one loss, they should have an opportunity to play for the national mm -hmm. championship. Of course, none of our finalists are from the Big 12, otherwise we might get a different <laughs> response. Exactly. Yeah, it's easy to say that now. Oh, it's great. About oh. the playoff system. <laughs> let, me, let, me ask you the, let me ask the difficult question, okay? You're in a room, private room, without consequences, uh -oh. beginning with you. Who would you pick for the Heisman Trophy? <laughs> on, Melvin now. Gordon. On, Tell them private room, no consequences, brother. Uh, Say it. Uh, Make it part of it. You can be selfish. You can be selfish. You think about it. We're great. You've got to have some pride in yourself. Seconds. I like it. Amari, who would you vote for for the Heisman? Uh, I would vote for all three of us. Oh, that's a cop-out. Hey, you guys are turning into politicians. No, 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 you haven't. I agree. You haven't. Get him off the set. There's a rationale behind it. What do you want oh, to Oh, yeah. This guy's put up great numbers uh, when, while only th uh, throwing two interceptions. This guy's reached 2,000 yards of passes wow. uh, out of any bet in uh, the history of the game. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like I have a my case as well so very cool thank you for being with us here and we thank you for watching the geico halftime report i'll be back after this message and a word from your local station cbs sports presents the geico halftime report geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance Adam Zucker in New York. A reminder, be sure to tune in to the next edition of Thursday Night Football on NFL Network. The Tennessee Titans take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. And tomorrow, the NFL on CBS continues with regional action. Many will see the Dolphins take on the Patriots and the Broncos face the Chargers. It all starts at noon Eastern with the NFL Today. And join us in two weeks for the Hyundai Sun Bowl as number 15 Arizona State takes on Duke. Coverage begins at 2 o'clock Eastern. The second half of Army, Navy is coming up right after this. College football on CBS. The Army Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by Autotrader.com. Napa. Geico. And by Chick-fil-A. Time in Baltimore, Army and Navy tied 7-7. Let's take a look at our military appreciation moment presented by USAA. For more, here's Allie. Vern, today's game is about so much more than football, and no one made that more clear than former U.S. Army captain and Army fullback Mike Vitti. Mike walked for over seven months across the country to honor every single U.S. soldier who has died serving our country in the wake of 9-11 and our country's war on terrorism. He started in DuPont, Washington, and made a giant U-shape from the northwest to the northeast, 7,100 kilometers, approximately one for each soldier who was killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. His finish line? Right here at M&T Bank Stadium to watch the Army-Navy football game. About two hours before kickoff, he walked the last steps with Emily Prasnicki, the widow of his quarterback, Chase Prasnicki. During the second quarter, Vidi, along with two other Army veterans, were recognized by both Army and Navy leadership for their efforts in honoring fallen comrades and the loved ones they left behind. Quite a moment. Allie, thank you. And one of the traditions associated with this Army-Navy game is the halftime crossover of the military dignitaries who are present. Back after this. Back to 
Edgar Polari gets in there and blocks the arm line and running in for a touchdown. Looks to throw into the end zone. Tillman, touchdown, Navy midshipman. As we begin the start of the third quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven. Navy and Army. And a moment ago, Allie LaForce had a chance to talk to Jeff Munkin. Coach, it seemed like your defense was one step ahead of Navy the entire first half until that final drive. What happened? Oh, we got off some blocks and made some plays, but they hit a big play, hit a big pass play, and you can't allow big plays. How do you get your offense playing to the level of your defense? We got to block them. I mean, we got to be able to move the ball one foot on fourth and one. If you can't do that, it's hard to move the ball, but we moved it at times. Just having sustained drives, we got to have to do that. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. All right, Allie. It has been a bit of a cloudy day, but by the standards established last year in Philadelphia, <laughs> That's right. this That's is downright sure. balmy. <laughs> it's but, perfect, actually. Yeah, it is. If you don't remember, last year we had sleet and snow and freezing quarterbacks, both in the booth and on the Navy sideline. for sure. Cale Brewer will kick off. Remember that Navy won the toss, deferred the option. And here's Brewer, number 81, Ryan Williams Jenkin, Antonio Gully are deep. 7-7 seven, seven in Baltimore with a short kickoff. Ryan Williams Jenkins gets loose all the way to midfield. Seth Combs makes the tackle. Well, Ryan Williams Jenkins back to return these kickoffs, gets the nod, and almost takes it to the house in great field position for Navy at the 50-yard line. Um, the Army cadets are strong-willed players. Right now, they have to stand up, bow their necks, and get a stop. Well, Munkin telling Alley, if you can't get a foot on fourth down, of course, they had a foot before the timeout was called and play rerun. Here's the pitch out to the right side and a slip tackle. That's Joffrey Whiteside, number 29, one of the seniors who runs the ball for this Army football team. Uh, it's amazing how small things it is. determine it the ball is. Game. And it's always that way. It's always yeah. been that way. It always will be. We talked a little bit, Vern, about Keenan Reynolds could play any offense. Right. You saw that last drive. 70-yard drive. He was three for three, 60 of it in the air. That's the type of drive your quarterback makes on these type of teams. I get, I'll tell you, Keenan Reynolds could play triple option, passing offense, anything. He's a playmaker and an athlete playing quarterback. Well, this is Reynolds. Had a couple of monster rushing games this year. And again, he, he was injured and missed all of two games. Yeah, I wonder about that, though. Texas State VMI. You think if that was Ohio State Notre Dame, he might have played? I don't see him sitting it out. You don't, huh? No, I don't. You're cynic, you. <laughs> right side, maybe. First down. Gary, take us through the first half trends. Well, it, you know, for a team that runs the ball better than anyone in the country, they were not able to run it. When you stop Keenan Reynolds, you stop the running game for Navy. Larry Dixon, not overwhelming. You know, both teams know you stop the fullback first and the quarterback. Xavier Moss got the plot, the, was the recipient of the blocked punt, and uh, you see it. Both of the defenses seem to be ahead of the game. First down, 10. In a tie game, there's the late pitch around the left side, and it's Dyshawn Romine, number 28. Well, we saw the arc block early. This time, Ryan Williams Jenkins, number 24 for Navy, gets the block to the outside and makes a positive play. That's the tough thing about playing against the triple option. It looks like you do a good job, and you look up and go, what? Six yards. I thought we stopped him. Yes. Second down four. Here's Reynolds. First down again. This began with a kickoff return to midfield, and Navy is marching. In the last 12 years, Vern, if you look at what's the difference, it has been rush yards. The average of 12 years, if you divide it out, 
It has been 302 yards rushing per game for Navy, 152 for Army. Almost twice as many yards per game, almost to the number. Navy's been a better rushing team in this matchup. Not this time. Joe Drummond featured early in the game with Stephen Riccardi. One of the things Jeff Monk and the Army coach came and said that we have to do better is we need to get bigger. Joe Drummond played this game last year at 230 pounds. This year, he's 255 pounds. And then, as they prepare for their military careers, they have to, to lose it. Yep. Yes, exactly. Second down, 11. We could all do that when we were 25. Now quit it. <laughs> oh, it's hard for all of us. There's uh, Copeland, number 34. Nice rush. Joe Drummond again with the tackle. I talked to Jay Bateman. And he said that he watched all 738 snaps this year for the Navy offense. The Army defensive coordinator said they, there's, he's looking right there at Jay. He says, you know, the thing that struck me last year about this game is they wore down the Army guys. They actually blocked them. He said, we have to be stronger at the point of attack. Chris Swain is the featured running back now. And false start. For a cost in five. Ball start. Offense number four. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's Jameer Tillman, the uh, wide receiver who caught the only Navy score in the ball game. I almost was thinking when it was third and three that Niamatololo was going to go four downs. You know, with the, the way they've struggled in some games, kicking field goals. I know they made a change and it's been okay, but I just thought he smelled that he could push it right in Army's nose and he was going to go for it. Let's see what he does now. Third throw, down eight. Throw yeah. the ball. And the blitz comes. Reynolds is back. Has to hustle. And he's caught and dropped. Andrew King didn't give up. And it paid off for him. The one big play the Army secondary gave up, as Coach Munkin told Alley, we have to make those plays and give up the big ones. Since then, they've been in perfect position before and after. They did it before, good secondary play, and on this drive, they bowed their necks and got a stop. This will bring on Austin Greeby. He uh, became the place kicker in midseason. He's perfect so far this year, four for four. His long is 44, and this is 45. And he's still perfect. Greeby gives Navy its first lead in the ballgame. Austin Greeby from 45. Ten, seven, Navy. Coverage of today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Earlier today, former chairman and CEO of General Motors and U.S. Naval Academy graduate Dan Ackerson, along with the president and founder of Wish for Our Heroes, Jeff Wells, surprised the military family with a Chevrolet Colorado and an unexpected homecoming reunion. Chevrolet is proud to support our service members across the globe with its military discount and much more. Ah, very touching moment when it occurred. And uh, we all wish them the best. 10 7, maybe with the lead over Army, having won 12 in a row. Or have we mentioned that? <laughs> a few times. Yeah. <laughs> So now it's the, the uh, midshipmen who are jumping. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, I don't know if you can mention it enough, really. I mean, it's on both sides of the field. The Navy field the side feels the pressure of keeping it going, and Army just wants to get it over with Yep. as soon as possible. Thought they had done that two years ago. 
when they were driving for a go ahead score Trent Steelman the wonderful quarterback and Larry Dixon mishandled a handoff at the 14 yard line and Navy prevailed last year nothing, nothing close this is Josh Jenkins nope. short of the 20 and let's check in with Allie LaForce Thank you, Vern. It's the 115th meeting between Army and Navy, but this time Navy's sporting a different uniform. They're sporting uniforms that have the Don't Tread on Me theme. Check this out. The gloves that they're wearing have a coiled snake, and they read Don't Tread on Me, inspired by the first Navy Jack. Now, the snake was found on the flag that was used during the American Revolution called the Gazden flag, so it's a tribute to their pastime, and they're pretty cool, too. These gloves are sticky, by the way. I don't know how they ever drop a pass. <laughs> Allie, thank you, and happy birthday a day later. AJ Sure. AJ is Sure is in a quarterback. That. Yes. And that's the well. question, you know, the Army offense, they did well. Everything was good, but no big plays. Remember, they tried the flea flicker. They tried, can they get a big play, maybe with a different quarterback? But remember, hold on to that football. You that's bet. last year he started that game a year ago, two turnovers early in the game. He never saw the field again. AJ sure is a junior. He's played in nine games this year. And it's second down and six. Up the middle, Dixon. All the way to midfield. There's a big play. Very cute hand back on this play. It looks like all the action is going to the right here. But then inside a little trap block done very well that time and sprung for a big play. Jaron Villegas was the young man who uh, had the block number 74 and the yards gained equal the number on his back 26 first down 10 big plays I mean it's nice to get and I even said it you know Army would like to go three four three five six but this is a good Navy defense and it's hard to do that against a veteran good defense sure keeps it nine yard game I don't know if A.J. Sure would have been able to play this football game had it been the week after Fordham. He suffered a dislocated collarbone early in the game in the first half and then an ankle injury in the second half. He said, talked to him yesterday, he's 100% ready. Now this team ended, this Army team, ended play before this game by defeating Fordham. A very good FCS school. Second down and one. Very good. Got it. Plus one. Raymond Maples. Uh, these injuries, Gary. Yeah, it was a big long run. I think it was a 50-yard run, and at the end of it, he falls right on his right arm, pops it. They actually popped it back in. He went back out and finished the football game, and then gets injured again. That just sounds painful. Yeah, popping that collarbone back in. Oh, yeah. They just pop anything but a finger. See, you know, all right, I'll pop the finger in, but anything after that. Yeah. First down, 10. 10-7 10 game. Army trying to claw back in front. Sure. A little unsure. He got strung out pretty well by that Navy defense, and you're right. He didn't know whether to pitch it or keep it. And once he hesitated, that Navy defense just ate it up. This is this uh, unbalanced package that uh, Army used extensively in the second half against Fordham their last game. Number two, Kelvin White actually lines up in a tackle position. How do you like that? He goes from quarterback to tackle. Hmm. Here he is again, lined up at tackle. Second down eight. Up the middle, not for much. Hugenberg is center trying to provide blocking help, but uh, Raymond Maples didn't get much. Now Maples out. He's a senior from Philadelphia, played at Philadelphia Catholic. And third down and five. Baggett is in. Under six to go, third quarter. Navy.
Maybe. Pitch outside. It was Baggett, and it's oh. going to be fourth down. It is, and on this time, I think uh, Coach Niamatololo will line up right next to the linesman because uh, there's no way that Army won't go for this. They're in between the gray area. Perfect triple option. Navy does their assignments exactly right. You string it out, and, whoa, they're going to try almost a 50-yard field goal? My goodness. It's Grochowski. His longest is 46. That was uh, they, AJ. They, sure is the holder. He, uh, Navy doesn't believe it. They're saying defense stays. They won't rush. 49-yard effort on the way. What do I know? Oh, no. He had enough leg. Yeah. Of that. Curved off at the last yes. minute. Good solid drive for Army. Defensed well on third down, and I thought for sure they'd go for it. And it looked at that point like he had tied the game. He thought he did. Yep. Ten seven still. a fairy tale yeah a fairy tale all right i got one once upon a time a long long time ago so long ago it was before even selfies before any of you were even born army beat navy no a story that's believable. Yeah, Army beating Navy? What next? Are you going to tell us there's such thing as a tooth fairy? You know, kids, I think you're right. I've never actually seen Army beat Navy, and I guess none of us ever will. Go Navy beat Army! Again. Everybody. <laughs> everybody good. gets into that's it. That's right. Oh, that's great. Hey, build a goat. Lose 12 in a row, people start saying stuff yeah, about you, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> First down, 10. There's that inverted uh, wishbone look again. We've seen it once so far in the game. Burnett option was defended perfectly by Army, but let me show you what a good defensive system is on defense. Now the object is one fullback, two the quarterback, and three the pitchback. Now watch Navy handle it. First by number 90, right there, Will Anthony. Then the next guy is the pitchback, number 44, Obi Uzuma. And then the pitch, number 42, George Jamison. That's assignment football and knowing how to stop the triple option. Now we'll see what Army's defense can do. They were effective on the last one. Reynolds puts it down, runs out to the right, followed by Riccardi. Oh, brother. Who does that remind you of? Little Blake Sims right there? Yeah, absolutely. He's a weapon, he's an athlete, and as they expand this offense, as Navy enters next year the AAC Conference, they're going to need a little bit more offense, I believe, dialed in besides the triple option. And as a senior next year that's what that conference is going to look at a guy who can do it all from that position first down 10 longest rush of the day and here's a good defensive play again that's uh, richard glover number 98. yeah maybe we'll join the american athletic conference whose commissioner michael oresco and his wife sharon are here mike of course a good friend of all of ours a former senior vice president at CBS. You know, Navy's the, in the East, but they are in the Western Conference. That's, I find that really interesting. <laughs> and you know, they requested they the did. West. They did. Here's the pass. Because it's so much of their recruiting right. area. National recruiting yeah. area and going. Nice read that time. The ball in and out of the quarterback's hands. They're trying to loosen up this Navy defense. Navy, excuse me, their Army uh, defense. 
The Army defense is zeroed in on the triple option. They're doing a good job, and Navy starting to expand their offense. Third down one now. 10-7, Navy leads. Reynolds pulls it back and keeps it and picks up a first down. You know, we said happy birthday to Allie LaForce. Keenan Reynolds, 21st birthday today. Allie is a galloping five years older. <laughs> first down, 10. Well. 21st birthday playing against Army on national television with a 12 game win streak. Not bad. No. Early success in your life. Yep. Well, Reynolds dodges the initial tackling. Now, Red Lobster presents today's scholar athletes. First of all, E.K. Bins, major in economics, and he wants to be a marketing director for a pro sports team. And on the other side of the ball, Joe Drummond, 3.54 GPA, and he will be in the military intelligence branch of the U.S. Army. Upon commission, Red Lobster donates $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Reynolds throws it and completes it to Brendan Dudek. They don't throw the ball much. They throw it more than Army does, and that's Dudek's 10th catch of the season. I think it's a nice adjustment for Ivan Jasper, the uh, longtime offensive coordinator under Kenny Niamatololo for Navy. They've been trying to do those play action passes deep. The safeties have been eating it up. So now they've gone outside and thrown the quick hitch twice. Third down three. Noah Copeland. And that's a first down. Jeremy Timph made the tackle, number 39. You know, we never used to listen to our coaches when we were young, when they'd say it's the little things that matters, but I think this football game again just showed you the little thing, that fourth down play. Yeah. Just the little things that matter. Now, obviously, the game's not over, nothing, you know, Army can get a stop at any point, but never know what play or the next play might be. There's Reynolds. Joe Drummond, number 54, made the stop. Final 26 seconds, third quarter. What? They're not going to snap it. They'll get it into the fourth quarter. Yeah. Try to tack one more on there and say, Army, can you catch up? Second down five when we begin the fourth quarter. That's the end of three with our score 10 7 Navy. We'll return to Baltimore right after this word from your local station. I'm tired hearing about the streak. It's something that, you know, we've been living with these past three years. The streak doesn't define who we are as a team. Uh, we've came up short a few times, obviously, for the past couple of years. And uh, I think this year is, we know what we have to do, and we're going to minimize those mistakes, and we're going to come out with a victory. You're remembered here for the things that you do, and I want my class to be remembered as the team that continued to streak. You don't want to be that class that loses it, but you can't be afraid of it. you got to come out. you got to work hard. You got to be confident in yourself and you got to you got to do your job. All of which is true. Sure. You know, it, it actually, I, I, Army has played a really solid football. I game. agree. But as we said, we started out with this thing. There's a difference maker on the field. He plays quarterback for Navy. And he's hit his last six passes after missing his first two. He's six for eight throwing the ball. And he'll go up the middle. And that's going to set up Absolutely. a third down and short. Well, this Navy defense has to get a stop here, Vern. They really do. Uh, you know, you've, you've had the feeling since we've talked about it, that timeout sure. call, the tide just has 
it has. Shifted. But, you know, if they get a stop here, now they haven't scored on offense. Right, right. Yeah. So if they get a stop, I think they're going to feel good about how they get the last fourth quarter. If they get behind 17-7, boom. Reynolds, first down. There it is. Yep. Just give the ball to your playmaker. He's so smart, he doesn't turn it over. He doesn't turn it over when he throws the ball. He has the lowest interception rate in the history of Navy football. He doesn't fumble the ball. Whoa, whoa, much. whoa, 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 whoa. Lower than Staubach? Yeah, I hate to say it. Oh. Percentage. Oh, okay. Percentage. Good. Okay, you know. Let's not let's not mess with heroes here. <laughs> Roger, of course, is here. First down ten. And the Navy Verizon red zone stats. Up the middle. Chris Swain. And look at how Chris Swain took care of the football when he had it. He knew he had a big play. He knows they're going to pound it this time. It's that step back play, trap play right up the middle. And he keeps both hands on that football. It's precious. Right down the gut. You run that quarterback on those keepers, and all of a sudden you step back, bring the guard across, and you gash him. First down goal with a three-point lead. The midshipman. Swain. Now they're going to take a timeout. They don't know what they're doing here. Yeah, Kenny Niamatololo is running down the field, and God, this is, he, I don't know if he and Monk can have run more this than anybody else. Munkin ran out before. May not have been pretty, but it was effective. effective. Timeout, Navy. College football on CBS. The Army-Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by the Home Depot. Wheels up. Hyundai. And by Sonic. We are in the early moments of the fourth quarter. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game, presented by Napa Auto Parts. Well, if Army can't come up right now for a play that's in contention for play of the game, it might not matter. I think either Andrew King or Jeremy Temp, number 11 or 39, those inside linebackers, might have to gash him inside some kind of blitz and force something to happen. They need to gamble on defense. First down goal. Swain again. We talked about, you know, big plays obviously can happen. Special teams, offense. Right now, Army needs to find a big play, some kind of turnover. We talked about that turnover that Army had a few years ago when it went all the way back 98 yards. Exactly. They need something big to happen right now. Well, Jeremy Tim for number 39 has been very effective today with 14 total tackles. This, however, is the 14th play of the drive. Second and goal. Reynolds keeper. Reynolds drives. And Reynolds did not get it. They're going to rule him short, and there's a scrum. So now somebody in a black uniform, Andrew King, came out with the football, but. Yeah, it happened too late after the play, though. They're not going yeah. to ever give you that on that situation. King does wrestle it away, but it's way too late. Could have almost as easily been called the touchdown. Third down, quick snap. Touchdown. Probably pretty nasty down there, but you just have to get an inch past the line, and the linesman to the far side called it. 
not by a lot, but you see him running in from the top of the screen, I'm certainly puts his hands up. not disputing the call, but I often wonder, how do you know? What I mean? No, it's got to be a guess. It's yeah. just a feeling of the momentum of yep. the quarterback. I mean, you did, they didn't know for sure. Unless they put chips in the football, you'll never know. So, <laughs> Could happen. Yep. It is under review. I mean, there's nothing in the pictures that showed that he made it. I can tell you that. Now, as we mentioned, this is an ACC crew. He gets stopped right away. There's no way from that picture to know if he was short. Now, remember, he was called a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can tell here if there's anything. Would they dare overturn? No way. His helmet no. was across the line. They're going to call it as it was called on the field. But I do think it would, it, had it been not called a touchdown, the replay official would not have called it either, a touchdown. He would have stuck with it, the call on the field. Well, that's our old friend and we visit periodically, Mr. Indisputable Evidence. After further review, the ruling on the field stands, touchdown. I would take another look at it, but I, there's no way he was going to no. overturn it. This was the play before. That was the second down play where he got right close to it. And then they did a quick snap on third down for the quarterback sneak. Gray beyond for the extra point mentioned there was a midseason change. Nick Sloan had been the place kicker ineffective this year so Greeby who hit a 45 yard field goal earlier tax on the extra point can Miyamata Lolo's team leads by 10. Next Saturday tips off a marquee event on CBS the CBS Sports Classic featuring four of the biggest names in college hoops sharing 25 national championships Ohio State Battles North Carolina in the first, and UCLA takes on Kentucky in the second. It begins with the road to the final four. Greg Anthony is going to join almost our entire oh. production group. Are you doing both those games, Brian? I am, I am doing I both. I yep. hope yep. I'm in from the golf course for the second one. I don't know, though, for sure. You're going to miss the first? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I thought that might be the to, case. I, <laughs> I thought that might be on your agenda. Yeah, well, you can get back at me during the Sun Bowl. Thank right? you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, you just have a feeling now, uh, Army not having moved the ball significantly throughout the game. Well, and they're 0 for 3 passing. Yeah, I know. I mean, and it's not, you know, when you try to do that, all of a sudden, you know, a score goes up really quick when you, if you make a mistake and something you're trying not to do. We've seen it so many times. End of halves, beginning of halves are just almost like college basketball. I mean, you've got to finish yeah. out quarters in basketball and halves in basketball. Too. Well, that last maybe drive, 69 yards, 15 plays, and it took almost eight minutes. Josh Jenkins returns it, but not very far. Yeah, and think about Army now. If they run their offense the way they want to do it, they might only get the ball twice more in this game. So it's critical they score on this drive. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. That started with such promise for the Army Cadets. Punt block, first of Pablo Beltran's career. And it was recovered by Xavier Moss after Jenkins blocked it, seven nothing. Here's one of the critical plays of the game, fourth and one. And as Santiago appeared to have a first time, it was ruled that uh, Neymar Lolo had called a timeout, was given one. Then on the next, the subsequent fourth down play, Army failed to convert. And immediately, Keenan Reynolds took over. Jameer Tillman for the touchdown that tied it 7-7. And then in the second half, 
Greedy with a 45-yarder to provide a 10-7 maybe lead. And then Keenan Reynolds nudged it in from a yard out, and that's where we are. 17-7 maybe. A.J. Schur is the quarterback. He'll keep it. Ah, nice game. Chris Johnson, number 46, with the stop. Army has thrown all of three passes. That's not atypical. They've not completed one. Second down three. Up the middle, first down, Larry Dixon. One of the best coaches in all of college football is the longtime defensive coordinator for Navy, Buddy Green. He has seen it all, and one of the toughest things when you're at the academies, because you face the triple option every day in practice, is getting ready for modern football that he has to face. He's done a magnificent job, whether he faces spread teams, power teams, or triple option teams. All right. Little hint of life here for Army. That was Larry Dixon again. I think Army is smartly sticking to what they can do. You can't be something you're not and throw the game away. You have to look at it as score on this drive. They're not going to punt again. I'll tell you that right That's now. That's right. They're going to score on this drive, no negative plays, and then see if you have to do an onside kick or you punt it back to Navy. Larry Dixon now 12 carries, 82 yards. First down 10 at midfield. Army under first-year head coach Jeff Hogan. Here's sure. That's about five. And when you know you're in four-down mode as an offense, especially a triple-option offense, you can just run your base plays over and over again. You know, if you get two or three yards, you're going to get it, obviously, to fourth and a yard. Second down, six. Just no negative plays, no penalties. Army playing against the clock and Navy. Here's that out balance line again with Hennessy at tight end to the right and the tight end attack over the left. They slip it up the middle to Dixon, 13th carry. Well, Jeff uh, Munkin played for his dad, Mike. He was his high school coach. This is at Milliken. And uh, Mike Munkin, somewhere in that crowd on the Army sideline, is here with his son, Jeff. Coach, his dad is a Hall of Fame high school coach in the state of Illinois. Munkin in his first year, having come here from Georgia Southern, third down two. Got it. Close. Yep. This, you know you're going to get it maybe two, maybe three times if you're lucky, if you're Army. Four down territory. If you get it down there, of course, you'll take the field goal to make it a one possession game if you're in that situation. But you're thinking as a play caller, I've got four downs. First down, 10. Clock starts again after the chain is placed. And we've got nine minutes remaining. And again, tight end at tackle right there. They go right, pitch back. No, 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 no. That was Terry Baggett, but that one was defended by Brandon Clemens, first one there. Brandon Clemens in uh, last year's game, we remember, he forced two fumbles and he intercepted a pass. One, one of them was recovered by Navy, so he actually forced two turnovers, but three, one, two fumbles and an interception, had a really strong game a year ago. Second and ten. Uh, sure. Balls on the Balls ground. Down. Yep. Went out of his comfort zone. He says he most admires Johnny Manziel. And that time, 
He tried to do a little bit too much. Let's Will see Anthony it. wrapped it up. I'm Excuse sorry, me, Gary. Once nope. his knee down is the only question I have. Trying to do too much. No, nope. nope. that ball was out. Paul Quesenberry ripped it out. Number 45 and Will Anthony, number 90, got there first. It's the first turnover of the day, excuse me, uh, yes, of this game. And in the 13 games, 12 game losing streak, they've only been even or positive three times. College football on CBS. The Army Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by Microsoft. American Sniper from Warner Brothers. USAA. And by Chick-fil-A. And it's 17-7 Navy, led by Keenan Reynolds. And a moment ago, Gary, he was, uh, looks yeah. like, just stretching. A little attention there, stretching out, getting stretched. He'd been hit all game. Remember last year? I do. In I Philly? Do. Never thought we did a good enough job, you and I and Trace last year, of really showing how cold it was during that game. Keenan Reynolds almost was suffering from hyperthermia in that game. Went at the end of the game to the heaters. And I coached to talk to Coach Niamatololo about that, and he said, you know, all game, I wouldn't let anybody go near him. And then I heard my quarterback was cold, and I go, guys, go near the heat. Ah, there you go. First among equals. First down 10. Noah Copeland gets the handoff and doesn't get much. First turnover of the ball game. Richard Glover makes the tackle here. And again, now this Army defense has to look for a turnover the, exactly the way Navy did it. Can they get in there on that mesh point just as Navy's handing that ball off? They've got to attack. They may give up a big play because of it, but their only hope is to look and try to do something before the ball handling is perfect. Second down and nine. Navy will not do any more reads, I bet. If it looks like a triple option, it won't be read out. It'll just be called in the huddle. And there's Copeland spinning. Next Saturday, it's a special edition of Thursday Night Football. First, the Eagles take on the Redskins at 4 o'clock Eastern on NFL Network, followed by the Chargers and the Niners on NFL Network and on CBS. So here you go, third down and essentially 10. You see the San Diego, San Francisco meeting in San Francisco penalty. first time. The least penalized team in college football just got a big penalty. Yeah, that was their third in the game. Mm. Second down. What, what kind of quarterback draw is this going to be? Mm. Yep. There you are. Well, he got 16 of the 18 back. <laughs> Joe wasn't Drummond. too surprising, was it? That was, there's no way Navy is going to throw the ball in this situation and give Army, first of all, stop the clock, and secondly, give a chance for make a play. Joe Zuzak, man, nice block on that one, didn't he? Sure did, number 64. Third down three. Navy's offensive line. Army struggled all year to keep their offensive line healthy. This Navy offensive line has started nearly every game. They barely lost two or three games all year to Nixon bruises all year. Toss left. Joffrey Whiteside. Look at him gallop down the sidelines. Safe play. You don't want to use a fullback mesh in these situations. That's when you can make a mistake. This time, toss it wide, get to the outside. Good block on the edge, and then Whiteside, watch him pull the ball at the end. I got the first down. Beautiful block that time by Williams Jenkins. I mean, Ryan Williams Jenkins had a good football game yes. here today. First down, 10. He likes when we come. Goes for over 100 against Ohio State. Today, he's had another brilliant day. Well, Whiteside himself is a native of Columbus, Ohio. 
And here's the give up the middle to Chris Swain. Kind of interesting that uh, we began our season in this facility, yep. Ohio State Navy. And we're going to wind up our regular season back in Baltimore. 17 7, five and a half to go. Here's the day he's had. 77 passing. That will not change. He'll go right under three seconds to snap that ball. The number to the far right. Swain, first down. And now Army will be forced to use their last three timeouts, yep. so hopefully to get the ball back, and then obviously it'll be, you know, somewhat of a shocking end if they could even, you know, score another time and onside kick it. After first down, Coach Munkin will use his timeout. Now the cadets will get back on the buses. And uh, it's funny, Coach Neomadalolo, the, the band started to play, and Coach was going, no, we don't need any music right now. We're trying to give signals. <laughs> We're calling the plays from the line of scrimmage. Keep it quiet. Nothing here. <laughs> Copeland, that is funny. Well, he's made some good calls from the sideline. Yeah. Okay, he made the timeout call on fourth down. He came down and ran timeout just before the touchdown and then quiets the band. What are they doing? The band playing when we got the ball. Anchor's not away. Second Very down surprised and Army did not take a timeout. Yeah. Shocked, in fact. They do have their full complement of three, but we're now at four minutes. Well, they'll use it after this one. I think. Scramble. Army's got the football. It would appear that way. How about that? <laughs> Joe Drummond. Drop the snap. Quarterback center exchange. You got the band quiet. You got your best player on the team getting a quarterback center exchange from a guy who's played all year, Tanner Fleming, number 75. And on a play you really don't need anything but the football, they turn it over. This is a Navy team that is six and five. When we talked to Neapon Matalolo on the phone, he said our problem all year lost focus. Yep. We invite you to stay tuned for the Dodge Post Game Show on CBS Sports. This one, just under four minutes remaining, and an energized Army team hoping they can capitalize. Well, they must feel that A.J. Schur is the best passer of yeah. the two. Well, he said his favorite player is Johnny Manziel. Can he do a Manziel-like tap dance down the field here? Last time, Navy did not allow a single pass. There's a reverse. Up to the other it's point. Kelvin White. And he's got him open. Joe Walker. <laughs> I, I, should I say what I said during the, during the commercial? Yes, you should. I go, yes, you should. Do they have anybody else that can throw the ball? I forgot they do. They got a tight end who used to play quarterback. What was I thinking? Kelvin White. <laughs> How about that? That's his first completion of the year. It's also the first completion for the team today, and here is Sure. First down, clock stops. And they do have all three timeouts left. 11-yard gain on that one. So if you're Navy and you're trying to rush the passer, do you go for number two or number 11? We'll see. Sure. Is that a well, face mask? It sure looked like it, but there is no flag. Oh, and, and AJ sure thinks there should have been. Remember, he has a shield, so it's hard to get your hand in there. No, that was a good known call that time. Right. 
Jordan Drake went right by it, and Army takes a timeout. Will Anthony with the initial pressure. Time call, 3.02 remaining. Tonight on CBS, celebrate the holiday season with Rudolph and Frosty, followed by a new edition of 48 Hours, tonight only CBS. I thought that was somebody referring to you and me, Rudolph yes, Frosty. Yes, there we go. People have used every two names they could. That's right. Us. Yep. Play action. Sure. Sets his feet and throws it short. Intended for Edgar Poe. And he had him open. He did just let him a little bit too much. Georgia Southern, Vern, Coach Munkin used the shotgun a lot, and he started out the season trying to do it. He said, we're just no good at it. Yeah. He said, so we've had to go back under center, where they may be forced to take a timeout here. The play clock is down. Not they do get it. Yep, they're sure. Comes near side. He's got Dixon. First down. Stay alive, don't they? They roll out, and Dixon runs the wheel route to the outside. Stay alive. Army has to feel good about themselves the way they've competed. They do not have as good a football team as Navy. They've hung in this football game, started out obviously with that block punt, and had not there been a big exchange there, they could have been in charge of this game. On first down, sure play action again. Goes deep, up in the air, incomplete. Intended for Xavier Moss, who was in turn defended by Brendan Clemens. Second down. Clemens, just a sophomore, started 10 times as a freshman, and you can see how comfortable he is on the football field. No panic in him. As we said before, he had an interception last year. He knows how to play corner. Good football player. Second down, 10. 2.29 to go. Army, two timeouts left. Remember, they, a field goal would be big. They could still run the sure. fullback here. Sure, we'll tuck it, and he will run. And he's out of bounds to stop the clock, driven there by Chris Johnson. Good, smart play by A.J. that time. Didn't have anybody open, was trying to direct traffic. But if you don't have a clean throw, make five yards. Remember, you can still get a field goal on fourth down before an onside kick. Clock running. I thought he had gotten out. But what am I thinking? 205. they would have ran the ball. I, I yep. thought they were going to run the ball, the fullback, on the down before. I thought they needed to run the ball there and think field goal. They cannot pass block. They're not the type of team that knows how to pass block in this situation. And Chris Johnson makes back-to-back -back big plays for Navy. Well, there are a, a large number of midshipmen who've come out on the field as the remainder are waving the flags. Gary? You know, Vern, looking at this thing right here, would it not be better odds to try the field goal in this situation? Remember, from 49 yards, he had enough leg. This was earlier in the game. And he had enough, and it just slid by. I think this is the better odds right here than trying to pick it up fourth and 11. Wachowski, 52. A.J. Schur will hold. This to make it a seven-point game. Daniel Grachowski. It comes back in. Got it! 
Now it's onside kick time. Kenny Niamatololo, the coach for Navy, is going, I screwed up. I didn't take a timeout. Nice of him. He yeah, another drilled, look. He drilled no, this did he ever. I thought he hit the other one from 49 long enough. We showed it, and it was. And this time, he hooked it right in. Army's got a chance. Down by seven. After the 52-yard field goal, onside kick coming up. Army has not attempted an onside kick this year. This will be their first. Navy has had five attempted against it. No one has successfully completed an onside kick against the Naval Academy. Well, get ready to watch some collisions here. I'll tell you that right you now. Yeah. You know, interestingly, Navy has nobody deep. Would you not kick the ball deep and try to recover it around the 20? There's nobody back here. Number 49, Mitchell Howard. Why not just pop one deep? Very odd formation for the Navy onside kick receiving look. Pooch, you throw that thing on the 20-yard line, it's a mad scramble for the football. You bet. The only guy inside the 40-yard line is wearing stripes. The official is down there at the 10-yard line. Well, we are taking a while to set this up, aren't we? One fifty one to go. Mitchell Howard is the kicker. Navy's got it. I think it was eighty nine Thomas Wilson that got that ball. Exactly. It was a nice onside kick. It bounced once, and then pops up on the second one, and Wilson goes up and gets it. Army can stop the clock once. They've got one timeout left. And maybe 149 away from its 13th in succession. If Navy takes a knee each time, they might have to punt. They need to kill a little time. Oh. That didn't look good. No. Richard Glover was right there to make the defensive stop. Last timeout. You can see Keenan Reynolds, he pulled a hamstring. He was stretching it earlier, and right there as he turned to look for the fullback, he didn't see him and almost panicked. Look, and he didn't know what to do. His left leg gave out. And Reynolds is down at the 45-yard line. Now, remember, Navy only has 10 days before they head to San Diego for the bowl game. It's the quickest turnaround of any team in any of the bowl games. Yeah, they go west to play San Diego State. See, he's got nothing. No push off on that left leg. Yep. He they they can't put another quarterback. Oh, no, no. No, not with They've already fumbled the center exchange once. So there's 103 seconds left in the game. And obviously, there's a 40 second clock, 80 of it in, the, in just dead time. So it's very close. They'll have to pump if they. And that's why they're running this ball. 
about that. See, if you have a bad left hamstring, you run the ball to the, to the other way so you can just stay away from it. Gain of 19. Just go to the other hamstring. That's all you got to do. Noah Copeland with a nice block downfield. And the ball is at the 31. And now they'll take a knee and take the victory. Go to victory formation. Everybody thought this, I believe that we go win, started in soccer. It actually started in this game. First time it was ever used. I, I believe, I believe that we will win. First started in this game. You continue to amaze me. <laughs> I saw it on YouTube. Oh, okay, okay. You know, okay. I'm not telling you what I saw before on YouTube or after on YouTube, but I saw that part on YouTube. Second down and 12 <laughs> as we quickly shift things back to the field. <laughs> but Baker's dozen. I heard that mentioned a couple of times in the hotel lobby. 32 seconds to go. Ken Niamatololo. First coach in Navy history ever to go 7-0 in his first seven games against Army. He'll hustle across and receive an embrace from Jeff Monken. They have been friends since 1989. Nehemiah Lolo is a senior quarterback. A little scuffle breaks out, but get that one separated. I hear a lot of whistles. Jeff Munkin was in his first year as a graduate assistant in 89 in Honolulu. You know, you love your brothers, but we all fought against our brothers, too, basically, right? <laughs> Certainly happened in my house. That's right. Ken Niamatololo. Let's go down to Allie, who is with Ken. Coach, for the 13th consecutive year, Navy has beaten Army in what many consider the greatest rivalry in all of sports. Does this feeling ever get old? It never gets old, but, you know, I'll give my, you know, tip my hat to Army. They had a great game plan, played really, really well. So, you know, I thought they played well, but proud of our guys. Was that timeout in the first half the turning point of this game? If I told you who told me to tell, take that timeout, you wouldn't believe me. Go ahead. Man upstairs. The man upstairs. Absolutely. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You. Kenny Niamatololo. Jeff Munkin first met on the campus of the University of Hawaii. They served together as assistants under Paul Johnson at the Naval Academy. Jeff Munkin will, I think, get it done. Absolutely. And he yep. has to be totally proud of his football team in this game. And now the alma maters. And for the 13th year in a row, Navy will sing second.
proving without a doubt that they are football players and not members of the Glee Club. <laughs> Well, that's about the only thing they can't do, these exactly. guys on both teams. They are the best we have in this country. Keenan Reynolds, winning quarterback. Jeff Munkin and Ken Niamatololo. And after you've won seven in a row as the head coach, you don't have to walk off the field. And those two guys, Sarah and Anthony, were a big part of why that guy gets the ride off on the shoulders. And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. We're going to go back about two and a half minutes to go in the first half, fourth and one. And as Angel Santiago takes the snap, watch the top of the screen. Kenny Niamatololo calls time. Did he get the time taken before the snap? Well, questionable. Anyway, he was given the time out, and then on the subsequent play, the stop was made on fourth and a foot. And that led to the first touchdown of the game for the Naval Academy. Miller caught it. And Reynolds threw it. They held on to prevail 17-10. And let's go down to Allie LaForce with Keenan Reynolds. Keenan, congratulations on the win and happy birthday. How is this for a 21st birthday present? Great. I mean, it's the best birthday ever. I mean, it don't get much better than beating Army on your birthday. Hey, this team is the number one rushing team in the nation. You've scored more rushing touchdowns in your career than any quarterback in NCAA history, but you won this game with just one rushing touchdown. What does it tell you about this team's ability to just do what it takes to win? Uh, you know, that's what it is. That's what winning is, just finding a, finding a way. I mean, hats off to Army. I mean, they play so hard on defense. Respect the heck out of those guys. I mean, I told them after the game, great, great group of seniors, and I look forward to next year. It's going to be a battle. Keenan, congratulations. Thank you so much. Vern, there is a space between Navy and Army football. It's closing. This will be as wide as we'll see it in the future. I think Jeff Munkin has Army on the right track. 17-10, the final. And so for Gary Danielson, as you look at the high moment in this game for Army, for Gary Danielson, Allie LaForce, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Baltimore. Our final score once again. 17 to 10. The Dodge post game show is up next. After these messages and a word from your local station, we'll see you down the road.